Now, to construct the Hamiltonian from the Lagrangian, we ask a very similar question. So, given L function of Q's and Q dots and T in general, and with Pj equal to del L del Qj dot, find Hamiltonian H a function such that del H del Pj is equal to Qj dot. You see the question that we are asking now is exactly uh, similar to the uh, problem of Legendre transformation. So we write it in the analogous form that dl is del L del qj dqj and then del L del qj dot dqj dot. Let's suppose del L del qj is fj. So fj dqj plus del L del qj dot is pj. So pj dqj dot. Remember everywhere we have sum over j because we are following the Einstein summation convention. Uh, it makes the writing a little bit tidy without the summation sign every time. Now, the last term pj and d of qj dot, we can write it as a total differential d of pj qj dot and from there we subtract qj dot dpj and we leave the dqj and its coefficient as it is. Then we do the rearrangement as before. We bring L to the right hand side and take everything else on the left hand side and eventually what we get is the D of the total differential of Pj Qj dot minus L that gives us Qj dot Dpj minus Fj Dqj and this you can identify. It immediately, immediately gives us that del H, I mean we define H to be pj qj dot minus l then del h del pj will give us qj dot and del h del qj will give us minus fj so we'll see that but this is after the definition this is uh, we get the dh is in this form now it is easy to equate the coefficients but the important part is what is fj well fj is del l del qj and from uh, lagrange's equation we already know that del l del qj is equal to the total time derivative of del l del qj dot but del l del qj dot is pj so what we have is pj dot now it becomes extremely simple the two condition one is the first one qj dot the rate of change of a generalized coordinate is equal to del h del pj and then the second condition from from here that pj dot the rate of change of generalized momentum is equal to negative of del h del qj now this set of equation each one is the order and we have two equation for each j so, which means if we have n generalized coordinate, we have 2n first order equation, exactly what we wanted. These are called Hamiltonian, Hamilton's equations of motion, also called canonical equations of motion. Uh, as many people mentioned and clearly uh, written in Goldstein, it's not very clear as to why it is called canonical, except uh, typically the canon or canonical usually refers to sacred I mean that of course we cannot deny this set of equations are too sacred in physics I mean they are very helpful and uh, you know very general so in any case uh, we call them canonical equations and what they do is they give us some description of the system in fetch space now we mentioned before that configuration space is the space defined by generalized coordinate. So for example we have uh, you know one two generalized coordinate let's say x and y. It could be a planar motion of a projectile in the xy plane. This x and y if you would like to describe the particle at any given time a single point describes that in the xy plane. So xy uh, that 
space is called configuration space because it describes the configuration of the system simple but now we are moving to a slightly uh, complicated uh, situation that we would like to give the status uh, i mean give the momentum uh, almost the same status as a coordinate which is quite uh, visible from this equation on the left hand side you see that they are so similar in terms of q's and p's that mathematically except that uh, negative sign which does not carry much significance yet as far as the status goes that uh, all are independent coordinates of all are independent of uh, you know almost equal stature so for example we have a 1d system one dimensional system or something which is moving along x and then this x and p they construct the phase space of the system so system at any given point of time at particular position it had some momentum that depicts one particular point in the uh, phase space we will see more about phase space a bit later now we have moved to hamiltonian and we calculated the jacobi integral or the energy function before uh, would like to have a look at what is the connection after all we define jacobi integral to be pj times qj dot minus l which happens to be exactly the definition of hamiltonian so uh, jacobi integral for all it matters is basically the hamiltonian although we uh, studied it before but we have not defined that to be hamiltonian we could have done that of course now we define j to be the total energy constructed from the kinetic energy and the regular potential energy remember not the velocity dependent part the velocity dependent part we showed that if it is a homogeneous function of velocity then it does not enter into the uh, jacobi integral so what we have essentially is total energy the t plus v minus t1 this is basically the kinetic energy which is uh, Uh, which has a which is the first order part of the kinetic energy which is uh, a first order homogeneous uh, function of velocity so this typically happens if you have a rheonomic system where the coordinates the cartesian coordinates are functions of time and then when you move to generalized coordinate you end up with some quantity like del r del t and del r del q j of course the del r del t the explicit dependence of coordinate on time is present in t1 and t0 so if it happens that you are we are dealing with a scleronomic system and in that case t1 and t0 both vanishes in that case the energy would be uh, simply conserved quantity also also we wrote the jacobi integral total time derivative dj dt in this form that we got minus del l del t explicit dependence of lagrangian on time and also the non potential forces i remember this is j and this is time derivative of j that they are not exactly same now this time derivative of j or the time derivative of hamiltonian after all both are same Uh, it is given by explicit dependence of uh, i mean lagrangian on time so if lagrangian is an explicit function of time then the hamiltonian is not conserved or if there is a non potential force then too the hamiltonian is not a constant of i mean constant it's not an integral of motion so um, but if we do not have any non potential force and also lagrangian is not an explicit function of time uh, that means essentially is scleronomic system again then uh, i mean i'm not exactly sorry i mean if del l del t is zero no explicit dependence on time hmm, i mean even uh, for rheonomic system accidentally it might happen that l lagrangian has no explicit dependence on time in that case a should be an integral of motion okay del del t is an integral of motion if it is an integral of motion then of course the h does not change so we have energy conserved 